I'm Ari. And I'm Carolyn. <laughs> and uh, welcome to our very last episode of Good Evening KU. Yes, yeah, so what's, do you have any summer plans, Carolyn? I do have some summer plans. Um, I think I'm going to be working a remote internship, so just cool. off my computer. I'm not going to be going into an office or anything or fetching coffee. Yeah. Um, so we were just talking about maybe I should be getting like a nanny job. Yeah. For some extra cash. I know. I feel like I know so many people um, just like our age that nanny mm -hmm. and they do it in the summer and they will come out and make like, like my, one of the girls in my residence hall was telling me that she's expected to make like 6,000 from her nanny job. And, and Lucy just told us she's making 700. Yeah. I like mean, one week. Like yeah. $700. Yeah. I'm not a saver. So I'm like thinking about everything yeah. you can buy that week. I know. And then I always think about like next year, how like it's, it'll be nice to have like a saving. So if yeah, I need well, new that. stuff, I can do that. That's like the smart way to think yeah. about it. I think what are yours? Um, so I'm, I work at a restaurant and I'm going to be serving. So I'll just be doing that. Um, mm -hmm. but it's nice because the restaurant's like, it's called Red Door. It's Red Door Grill. Yeah. But it's like really, really nice. close to my house. So it, that's nice. And I don't Wait, know. Which Red Door is it? Um, so there's a new one that opened in Lenexa. Because I oh, live in yeah. Lenexa. But I know there's some in like Leewood. There's yeah. some all over in Overland Park. We went to like a homecoming dinner at Red Door Grill. Yeah. It's like. In high school. It's like regular bar food, but it's like kind of a little bit more upscale. Yeah. But Something about yeah. it doesn't feel like a Johnny's yeah, yeah. or like a. Blue but it's Mose. kind of that same kind of food. Same vibe. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to be doing that. But I'll probably just work like four times a week and then I'm taking a summer class so oh, I'll really? be doing that. What class? Um, it's like an American history class mm -hmm. so I think it's worth three credit hours so I'll be doing that. Mm -hmm. and yeah I'm just wrapping up with finals. Yeah and we were also just talking about how like neither of us really have a ton of finals like a ton of test taking finals. Yes. Or yeah. really finals in general because yeah. like in the J school we have projects we're not like studying much yeah I feel like in the journalism school it's so like based off of because you're learning so many strategies that it's like you can't really take an exam over it mm -hmm. so a lot of my professors will have us do like um, final projects or right. finer final papers mm -hmm. so I have a lot of that stuff this week mm -hmm. and then my week should die down probably next week when everyone's yeah. taking their when actual final when everyone gears up to like go into the class with a number two pencil yeah or whatever, like I could probably leave. I know. It's so interesting because I have never taken a final at KU this year. Mm -hmm. So I just, I always ask my friends, I'm like, so what is, like, what do you do? Do you I just know. sit there and like. I'm honestly a little jealous because, yeah. and we were talking about that earlier, like, it's so satisfying to have learned so much material and then just get tested over it yeah. and then do it. And like, also the day of a test, as long as you're prepared, like, it's not that bad. Yeah, I know. And this week is like a little bit stressful for me just because I have so many deadlines in such a short period of time. So I will be mm -hmm. at the library probably a lot this week yeah. <laughs> doing my papers and stuff. But mm -hmm. other than that, we honestly experienced some kind of glute worse, experiencing gloomy weather today. But also over the past weekend, we've had we are. really strong winds, a lot of rain. And I know um, that sort some tornadoes touched down in Andover and Wichita area. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and I think I'd and honestly- what do you know about that because I, I, I only just saw a video yeah I don't know a ton but like from what I saw from like visuals and pictures and stuff it looks like it hit some areas like really really mm -hmm. bad um which is so weird because living in Kansas you're always like taught that Kansas is such a everyone's like oh it's yes. tor tornado alley or yeah. whatever and or like, like we would have so many tornado drills in elementary yeah. school like this first Wednesday of every month like the sirens will go off go yes. to the basement it's like I I mean, I live in the suburbs, so like yeah. I feel like a tornado a tornado is never really going to get to us. Yeah, I feel like yeah. I know it's crazy okay, because yeah. it it's did bad. like yeah, it's bad um, in some places. But personally, I have never um, really experienced like a true blue like bad tornado. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm watching that video. This is like I haven't seen this. That looks cool. yeah. Like I think it was really bad in Wichita. Is that real? That looks like a cartoon. I know. Oh, that's really, really sad to yeah. everybody who was affected by it. Yeah, it is really um, sad. Um, but I don't know a ton about it. I just saw videos and pictures, and I was I like, know. that looks really bad. Um, I know. I feel like, well, I, so I have family that lives in Joplin. Oh, and so they, they yes. it? Well, they moved to Joplin a couple years after that tornado, but I remember them telling me, like, even two years after when they moved to Joplin, they were like, it is still, like, so mm -hmm. destructed and like they were still having so much construction done on buildings because mm -hmm. I know the Joplin one was really really bad yeah um, my fourth grade teacher was from Joplin and I remember she would like kind of be crying 
talking about the destru the destruction that had happened, but we were like nine. And yeah. And it's like, I don't really know. You don't understand the caliber yeah, like, of it. Yeah, we didn't yeah. understand it. But honestly, it is really sad, and I hope that there's like some campaigns and like donations yeah. that people can donate to. <laughs> yeah. But um, other than that, I feel like in pop culture news, I heard that Elon Musk bought Twitter. Right. And I obviously don't know exactly what that means, but yeah. I'm hearing that like the fact that one person can buy such a like public yeah. free speech platform is kind of weird because it's like, okay, then what next? Like Twitter yeah. used to be something that was like funny and you yeah. would just like tweet stupid thoughts. Yeah. And now it's like a platform where like politicians, mm, activists yes. like use it as their outlet to the public. So yeah. it's like if one person can kind of control that, it's like what if Elon Musk has like really strange political views and yes. just decides like turn off people's accounts. Well, I was thinking that too because I heard he bought it for 44 billion, which is first off just so insane that he bought it for that much. I know. But yeah, I think I'm really interesting to see where like he takes Twitter next mm -hmm. because I feel like it was such a platform where you could just like put out random stuff. Just like and I feel like more of a comedy app and yeah. now it's become more of like a but like almost a political like a thing. network. Yeah, of some it kind. is. And yeah, I actually am in a class where we talk about like recent presidents and how they interact with like social media to promote mm -hmm. campaigning and I talked about how Donald Trump used Twitter a lot to promote promote like his campaign and stuff which mm -hmm. honestly didn't age super well right he got in some trouble yeah. but yeah so I think it's I'm really interested to see where he takes mm -hmm. it next because I have Twitter but I'm not a super active Twitter I kind of am really I don't tweet I don't <laughs> okay. like put my own like, you, like thoughts out I will retweet so much I but I use it for like yeah. comedy you know yeah. like comedic relief I'm not really like following like voices of yeah. like important figures and hearing like what they want to relay to the public yeah but and he's such a like creative person he's so funny yeah he, he makes is. me laugh and he's really creative so I'm curious to see where he's gonna take that next. right after the news broke that he had bought Twitter he tweeted something that said next I'm buying coca-cola and putting the cocaine back in it <laughs> and it's kind of weird because that's like a weird thing to say, but like, look how much power he has, yeah. and he can just like no. be kind of crazy and neurotic, and then also now like rule over this yeah. free speech platform. I know he's definitely built like such an empire, just first mm -hmm. with Tesla, and then expanding it to doing. I think it'll be really cool to add that other job onto his resume and be like, okay, I work with Tesla, yeah. but I also own like yeah. this huge social media network. So yeah. I think it'll be really interesting. But I am excited to see where that goes next because I use Twitter for some of my journalism classes um, oh yeah I'm always seeing people being yes. like people I know yeah. who don't use Twitter all of a sudden being like what do you all think yeah. of this I'm like what are you doing yeah because forget it's for a class we had to like we could tweet over like different topics and so it would change from week to week like one week would be weather the other would be like sports or like politics or COVID and mm -hmm. so it was like really interesting to see everyone's tweets but now I'm like I don't know if Mm -hmm. educationally Twitter will be used since yeah. you know maybe some changes will be made and I think I saw something that was like if one person can buy Twitter like what does that mean mm -hmm. for like the rest of the social yeah. media like what if someone buys you know like Instagram or does somebody own Instagram I Facebook like, owns Instagram yeah but I know and Instagram is one of those platforms too where I feel like you can kind of just put out whatever you mm -hmm. know so I feel like if someone did buy Instagram and like changed the yeah. dynamic of it, it would be almost kind of weird yeah. Yeah. But I, I think that's all we have for today. And after the break, we'll have Hannah on news and then Ryan with sports and Brayden with the weather. In our Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas, a great place to be you. Back. I'm Hannah and this is your Monday Good Evening KU News Update. An EF3 tornado ripped through Andover, Kansas on Saturday, damaging more than 1,000 buildings in south central Kansas. Winds up to 165 miles per hour carved a path of destruction nearly 13 miles long in the Wichita suburb. 
While there were no reported deaths directly from the storm, three University of Oklahoma students were killed in a car crash while storm chasing. Former presidential candidate Walter Mondale died last April, but because of COVID concerns, his memorial service did not occur until this past weekend. President Biden spoke, calling Mondale one of the nation's most dedicated patriots and public servants. Mondale and vice presidential candidate Geraldine Ferraro lost the 1984 election to Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush. Country music star Naomi Judd died this weekend just a day before she was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. Judd and her daughter Winana won five Grammy Awards as a duo, and in a statement from Winana and her sister Ashley, their mother's death was attributed to the disease of mental health. The bill to override Kansas Governor Laura Kelly's veto of the Fairness in Women's Sports Act failed in the Kansas House by a two-to-one margin. Supporters of the, bill are, of the bill are concerned with the fairness of allowing transgender athletes from playing on a team that matches their gender. And now for sports, we'll toss it over to Ryan. Thanks, Hannah. KU track and field athletes won 14 events at Saturday's Rock Track Classic. The Jayhawks will head to the Big 12 Conference meet in two weeks in Lubbock, Texas. Not a great weekend for baseball and softball teams. The top-ranked defending national champion Oklahoma Sooner softball team crushed the Jayhawks by scores of 7-0, 19-0, and 9-1. KU is now 15-31 this season and 2-13 and in the Big 12. Next up is a trip to Ames, Iowa next weekend to play the Cyclones. After losing 2-3 to to West Virginia, the baseball is now 18-26 overall and 3-12 and in the conference. They'll have a quick two-game series in Omaha on Tuesday and Wednesday, followed by the Sunflower Showdown with K-State in Manhattan next weekend. The rowing team beat K-State 15-7 on Saturday in the Sunflower Showdown on the Kansas River at Berkham Park. The conference will be on May 15th in Austin, Texas. And finally, the men's golf team placed sixth overall at their Big 12 Conference Championship this weekend in Trinity, Texas. The Jayhawks shot 29 over par to finish just ahead of Baylor in the team standings. The selection show for Nationals will be on Wednesday. That's it for sports. After the break, Braden will be here with the weather. Okay, when asked about mental health in finals week, the first thing I think about was when I was told that your physical health and your mental health are just as important as one another. Some activities that I plan to partake in during finals week are things like exercising, sleeping extra, drinking lots of water, um, going to the park, just hanging out with my friends, and really making sure that I'm doing things that I enjoy. Welcome back. Uh, I'm here for your weather. So. Uh, today I'm going to talk about this past weekend because we had some a bit crazy weather in Kansas uh, but for the rest of the show I'm going to talk about how today was rainy but we're going to see some drier weather but on Wednesday we could see a low pressure system moving in that will bring rain chances off and on from Wednesday into early Friday. Um, so over the weekend I went with Halen Wilhite who is on the KUJH News Meteorologist, and we went and chased some storms safely. And this is a picture I took in Hope, Kansas, which you can see right there, not too far from Lawrence. Um, and here is a picture of a wall cloud. Uh, and then later we got some pictures in Harrington, Kansas. Um, you can see this nice um, wall cloud type of situation, and not too far from Hope, Kansas. And then, um, this is pretty hard to see, but here is my first ever cloud to ground tornado that I've ever seen. I saw three tornadoes on Friday, so uh, that was pretty exciting. But um, all of them that I saw, they were just in fields, so nothing damaging, uh, thankfully. Um, unfortunately, though, as we were talking about in the news, there was a tornado that hit Andover, Kansas. And this is a tweet from Reed Timmer, who had some pretty famous uh, videos that were shown. Uh, I think his video was also shown in the news segment. But as he said, uh, yes, the winds of that tornado shot up uh, from 10 to 300 miles in seconds, which later I think uh, they decided that, that's where Andover, Kansas is, they decided that the max uh, winds were not actually 300, but he was just tweeting that first uh, case scenario. He didn't know for sure. Um, but uh, the timing of that storm, it started at 8.10, and it uh, lasted until 8.31, and the max winds were 155 miles an hour. This is all courtesy of the National Weather Service in Wichita. 
Um, there were three injuries, I believe. One of them was in Sedgwick County, and two of them were in Sedgwick County, and one in Butler County, but nothing fatal. And um, yes, that's a, it was uh, categorized as an EF3, which is considered a significant tornado. Um, so in Kansas, uh, here's a map, it's a bit blurry, but uh, the red dots are where you can see uh, tornado, tornado reports, uh, green dots are where hail reports are, and uh, winds are the blue dots. So in total in Kansas, not including all the outside tornadoes, there were 16 torn tornadoes reported and over th or 34 hail reports were went, or hail was over an inch wide. Uh, including one report in Dickinson that reported hail of four inches in diameter, but keep in mind all of this information is preliminary, uh, so it hasn't been completely confirmed, but there also was over 100 significant wind reports. So Friday was a very intense weather day, um, um, but right now uh, it's a little bit calmer outside. Uh, we have some misty precipitation coming down and winds are from the east at 16 miles an hour. Uh, we're sitting at 51, so it's a bit chilly with the high humidity. Um, but tonight we're going to see showers mainly before 11, but hopefully it should be just mostly cloudy after that. We have a 90% chance of precipitation before 11, and we can see those winds from the east at 5 to 15 miles an hour and gusts at 20 miles an hour. For, unfortunately, the same area that experienced that tornado that I talked about earlier is under a uh, enhanced risk, but the moderate risk, the greatest risk is along the Kansas and Oklahoma border and some into northern Oklahoma. Uh, we are in the marginal, maybe, maybe enhanced, but um, uh, the likelihood that we're going to see severe weather, I'm not saying that we're probably going to have severe weather given that how given how cold it's been today. Um, so not, not too much of the severe weather concerns. However, um, tomorrow we're going to see dry conditions, which it might be the only day, weekday that we'll see dry conditions for the whole day. Um, when, it will be a bit windy. Uh, winds from the northwest at 10 to 15 miles an hour, and we'll see mostly cloudy skies with a high of 62. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, pretty calm. Winds will be from the east at 5 miles an hour, still continuing those mostly cloudy skies with a low of 47. And for this week, we're going to see a low pressure system coming in on Wednesday that can stay through through Thursday and make its way out of our viewing area on Friday morning. But we're going to see temperatures in the mid 60s for the most of the week. But for the weekend, we can see we're hoping to see some clearing skies, some drier weather and some pretty nice warmer temperatures, especially on Sunday with that high of 81. And that's all I have for you. Stay tuned for our final trivia for our final show. You may not hear it at first, but it's there. Our chant, rising. On this summit, callings converge. Voices unify into a chorus sounds out for good, for greatness. Can you hear it? Ready to rumble! As we test our participants' knowledge in three areas, geography, sports, and pop culture. Both of our participants are familiar faces on Good Evening KU Trivia. On one side we have Emma, and on the other side we have Hannah. Both participants are undefeated, so I'm excited to see who will win the championship today. Emma and Hannah, are you ready? Ready to win. I sure hope that I'm ready to win. <laughs> Good luck to you both. Let's move on to our game. The first question goes to Emma. Emma, what is the most popular book of all time? A, Lord of the Rings, B, Harry Potter, C, the Bible, or D, the Quran? Um, I'm going to say C, the Bible. That is correct. The most popular book of all time is the Bible. The second question goes to Hannah. Hannah, what is the largest country in the world? A, China, B, Russia, C, India, or D, Canada? I'm going to say Russia. That is correct also. The largest country in the world is Russia, so that makes letter B the correct one. 
Emma, it's your turn again. Who invented the periodic table of elements? A. Dmitry Mendeleev, B. Albert Einstein, C. Alfred Nobel, or D. Antonine Lavoisier? Um, I'm not entirely sure, but I feel like A is the right answer. A is the correct answer. Dmitry Mendeleev invented the periodic table of elements. Hannah, question number four goes to you. What is the first capital of the USA? Washington, D.C., B, uh, Roanoke, Virginia, C, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, or D, New York City? I want to say New York City. That is also correct. The first capital of the United States was New York City. Okay, so you guys are tied. Question number five goes to Emma. In what school year did KU play in a Christmas Day Bowl game, the Final Four, and the College World Series? A, 1987-88. B, 1992 to 93, C, 2007 to 2008, or D, it actually never happened? Um, that's such an obscure question. I want to go with just like it didn't happen. <laughs> that is not correct, actually. Okay. KU played in the Christmas Day Bowl game, the Final Four, and the College World Series in the 1992 through 93 school year. So that makes letter B the correct answer. Final question goes to Hannah. What is the longest running TV show of all time? A, Gunsmoke, B, Law and Order, C, Wonderful World of Disney, or D, The Simpsons? I'm gonna say D, The Simpsons. That is correct. So we actually have a winner. Today is Hannah. Congratulations, oh. Hannah. Oh my um, gosh. So this is the last <laughs> show, Good Evening KU show of the school year. I'm gonna wish you all happy studying for finals and have a great summer.